I think it's one of the key factors that we're able to, to bring together so many different independent resources, whether or not they're our membership or indeed the private sector or the, the, the NGO community, civic society and what have you, and really get them to, um, to bring to bear what they can offer a particular problem. In complex emergencies, there's, there's no room for parochialism, right? You know, every, it's all hands on deck. You've got a whole lot of competing interests, or competing stakeholders, and they've got all their points of view coming forward. And there is overwhelming amounts of, uh, of information and, and influence and, and people trying to get their objectives or, or achieve their outcomes. Getting people to understand what the overall picture looks like, getting to understand where they fit into it, um, but, but really getting to understand that, that the decisions and the advice and the position they need to take is what's for the good overall, as opposed to them as an individual. What are the real needs? What is really happening there? And then based on that objective analysis, identify what are the strategic objectives. Okay, those are the requirements. What are we trying to do? If you're on an operation, everybody who's following you needs to know your intent. Uh, your intent is absolutely crucial uh, to the understanding of what the mission's all about. Uh, you need to be able to give your direction in the form of a vision. Uh, you go where the vision is, and essentially a vision can be uh, further defined by the plan, goals and objectives. It starts with uh, the vision of leaders and then the diplomacy uh, to kind of bring everyone together, and then the vertical coordination from the capitals to the country where the disaster occurred in the capital there where that prime minister or president and the ambassadors are all involved and that consensus around them is built up diplomatically properly at the beginning then things are much easier yes you still have all kinds of uh, challenges but it's all headed in kind of the right direction when working with international partners in a particular environment the reality is that each of us are there for our own national interests. So it's trying to reconcile all of those national interests to move forward in terms of our um, support and assistance to the particular host country. The command and control issue is critical, but it's important to identify who leads, who takes the lead, but also to be able to convince others that yes, they have a role to play within that centralized leadership, because without it, then everyone would be doing its own in a very unstructured manner. So it's critical, first of all, for the leader to be able to, to harness the competencies of the different actors in, in such a situation. And then be able to periodically uh, evaluate the actions that have been taken. What's the impact of the actions? Because a complex situation requires adaptability. Really having a sense of what it is that the people you are going to assist actually want and need uh, is probably the most important thing that we can offer. We have a tendency to offer um, assistance in programs. And those programs are based on our own capabilities, but they're not necessarily aligned with the needs of our recipients. Whenever there's an emergency, a peace operation, they take their view, oh, this is what we do, this is how we contribute. And then everyone brings their bag or basket of stuff to the conflict and say, oh, how do we fit in? I need to fit, you know, I, I want to participate, I want to engage, my organization's important, and they want to bring their stuff to that crisis. Because everybody is coming together from different parts of the, of the globe to put together this country's police, this country's public security. And of course the only way they can do that effectively is to be coordinated amongst themselves and focused amongst themselves. But then you have to convince your clients that actually this is how they want to do it as well. So it's not just a matter of having the norms and principles of rule of law and policing and so forth be inculcated amongst those who are going to do policing. It's really a matter of having these well known and um, agreed as goals in the international community at large. You're never going to encounter 
the perfect mission, right? I mean, by definition, it's going to be changing, adapting, complex. You need to be open-minded and you need to be able to um, adapt, you know? And also not, not always ask for permission for everything you have to do. Sometimes you have to make a decision, you know? Being able to set some intent and broad direction use mission command as a methodology of giving guidance, but encouraging initiative, encouraging freedom of action, and helping to support those below you, while seeking to have a very steady conversation with your superiors, so that you're always connected to the interests and intent of your own national capital, be able to translate that into the intent and direction with freedom of action for my people and do that in complement with partner agencies whose expertise I respect.